Okay, I'm gonna press record. Mm -hmm. Just tell me when we're at 15. And welcome back to the nub. This is the Merce. It's Felton. And the Bald Baby Bard. And we are back, and we are going to be in a lot better mood than we were last, last podcast. We're going to be a little bit more bright and happy and, and make fun of each other like we normally do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start off by talking to you guys. I know that I've said it a couple times now, and you guys are probably getting tired of hearing about it, but I just I absolutely love the new Pathfinder Adventure card game. And I just got the expansion for it, the first expansion for the newer version of it called Curse of the Crimson Throne. And let me tell you, man, I, I love the uh, the addition to it. This one takes place in a place called uh, 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 Verissia. Um, it introduces the stuff called Harrows, which are basically like um, like fate, basically. Like there's like a Harrow deck even. And it's basically like card reading, like tarot stuff uh, that's introduced into the game, which is kind of cool. Um, it also introduces like a base that you can use in the game that keeps like supporters that you collect throughout the game that can actually help you while you're playing the game. So it adds like more of these elements that are even closer to like a real RPG, which I absolutely love. Um, the first yeah, adventure cool. in it, the first adventure in it was friggin' great. It had this like cool twist at the end that I won't tell anybody in case they are trying to play the game. But I just I was just like blown away by it because I, I think I told you guys before they actually added a story to the Pathfinder Adventure card game now, instead of, like, in the past, where it's like you had all these missions to go on, basically. You had this whole, like, adventure and all these scenarios and stuff to go on, but there was no, like, actual explanation as to what the hell you were doing. You know, no little, like, blurb, like, oh, you know, we're going to go to the mountains and fight these giants for a reason, you know? And I think they did it because they, they the first the first uh, version of it was, uh, was the Rise of the Rune Lords. That was the first uh, set that they did. And I think they probably figured that a lot of people just played that scenario in Pathfinder, but I've never played that scenario in Pathfinder. I have no idea what the hell I was doing. I don't know. I didn't know anything about the rise, the ruin lores, none of that stuff. So, anyways, but this this one so much, so much better. The cards are nicer. They're nice and glossy. You know, they oh, it's just it's so much better. Sorry, just had to nerd out a little bit on my on my uh my board game there. Um, I just I feel like you know I'm the one that's got to represent the board games here, right? <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Bald Beard Bard, has your family played that um, that DC deck builder? We yet? have uh, some. We're, we're, we're packing to move, so everything's uh, packed up. But we did get to play that a, a couple of times. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. That's like those kinds of those kinds of card games are my favorite. But I can't play them with Foxtail because she just destroys everybody <laughs> in deck builders. Like she absolutely is, just annihilates. I've seen. I don't it know what hand. it is. Right? Yeah, you felt it. You've you've gotten the butt hurt from it. <laughs> it's been it's bad. But then you know, don't play Munchkin with her because she because as soon as you mess as soon as you mess her up in Munchkin, she's she'll have a vendetta against you. You know. I still think she's Craven. Upset that uh, yeah, well, Craven. I mean, God. <laughs> so we played. You no, know, go ahead. You you tell the story. No, no, you're probably gonna tell it better. No, you. I want to hear your version of it. So I, I we were playing. D, uh, oh boy, Mar, uh, DC deck build, Marvel deck builder. Well, no, it was we we're that time we were playing Marvel Munchkin. Marvel Munchkin. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep in mind, uh, Stony or uh, Ball B. Can I, I'm going to call you Triple B, right? Is that is that cool? Sure. Oh, there we go. Triple B. Keep in mind, Triple B. Uh, I am terrible at card games and life, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I am just hanging on by the the very seat of my pants in this game. And I get this one card, and it's Craven, you know, Craven the Hunter. And I remember him from the cartoon, and I'm like, well, this is cool. You know, this this guy, I, I liked Craven. He was a good kind of bad guy, anti-hero, you know, kind of dude. Okay, all right. And uh, I get into this uh, situation where I think I was uh, up against a, a duel with Foxtail or something. Right. Well, let me pause for one second. Let me just I, for those that are listening that don't know what Munchkin is. Uh, Munchkin is a giant fu game. Um, basically, <laughs> like, like you, you think you're doing great, everything's going you know, your way, you're winning, and then everybody else at the table tries to screw you like any way they possibly can. Or somebody takes like, your entire can, hand. Yeah, pretty much. So people can team up, they can do all this kind of stuff. So that's the kind of game that we're playing. All right. So continue. So yeah, so I, I get into, remember I get into some fight uh, and then I have to to fight against Foxtail, and you know I'm mm -hmm. like okay you know this card looks uh, looks pretty powerful you know I'll I'll use this card 
And hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick though. I, I know I know you're supposed to be telling the story, but uh, <laughs> let, let's let's pause for a second and take into account that th- during this duel, if I remember correctly, Foxtail was about to murder Deathface him. Yes, like, she was about to hit him with like eight, you know, wandering monsters and you know all the power ups in the entire game. Like she was just going to wreck his whole life. Yeah, Continue. and I re- I remember <laughs> the smi- the smirk on her face. That she was mm-hmm. about to end my day, and you know that was it. And I, I come out with this card, and apparently I had the conditions met for mm-hmm. Craven to just completely uh, annihilate her as the player out of the game. Yeah, it, like, it, the, <laughs> the, it's the weirdest weirdest card I've ever seen. But it basically, <laughs> in one stroke, in one card play, he wiped her out. He, like it literally, it's I don't remember. I have to look back and see what the card says. But it was basically like Craven shoots you in the face, <laughs> and you're yeah, you're just, dead. It <laughs> was just uh, munchkin. Your your yeah. character is dead. You, the player, are dead. Your whole family is dead. If you had any pets, they're all dead. Like that's this was the most crazy card I've ever seen in my life. So yeah, and I just remember the uh, the look on her face was just like, "Oh my God, are you serious right now?" And it was like, I, did- uh, I, I, I didn't know. Hold on, I got I got it right here. I found it. Let's see. It says, uh, "Hold on, I guess I'm not going to be able to see it." Okay. <laughs> it says, uh, "You're dead." <laughs> yeah, ba- ba- basically, it's like, as you, you may can I tell you, I. I- to this day, I can't get uh, Foxtail to play Munchkin with us at all. <laughs> oh like, no! <laughs> it was uh, it was my fault. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad about that. You know, she will murder Deathface everybody in a deck builder, but she will not pick Munchkin up again. <laughs> <laughs> that was just that was apparently such a crippling defeat. My God. Munchkin is the kind of game that ends friendships, it ends families, it ends like ah. it ends peace between nations. Like you don't want, you know, Russia and you and the US playing Munchkin right now cuz well, it's going to be bad. First of all, there's some world leaders that if, if I can't figure it out, uh, you know, I don't want a world leader that's uh, dumber than me. <laughs> God. Oh man. All right, let me run let me jump real quick to the uh to the Comic book. It's, I, normally, it's comic book news, but I don't really have a whole lot of comic book news right this second per se. I'm actually just want to talk again about another uh, comic book series that I really think everybody should check out if they get a chance. It's called Animosity. It's by um, Margareta Bennett and uh, Raphael De La Torre, I believe. Um, it follows the adventures of a young girl named Jess Hernandez and her dog Sander. Um, and I know right now it sounds like oh it's a cute you know fun little you know uh, adventure with a, a girl and her dog, but no, not at all. Um, basically, what happens is every living creature on the planet becomes sentient. Like oh God. every single one of them become like has the knowledge of a human being, right? And they gain the knowledge to uh, in comparison to roughly where they are age wise compared to humans, right? And they can learn, they can speak, they can talk, the whole nine yards. So, of course, at first, all hell breaks loose. You know, the first the first uh, story arc is basically um, The Walking Dead with animals, you know? Um, the, all the animals that were oppressed are, you know, are, are overthrowing their human oppressors. Um, the animals that were pets that were treated really nicely are trying to protect their, their, their humans. And that's where Sander comes in. Like, Sander's a, a dog who uh, is obsessed with protecting his, uh, his, his owner, you know, the young, the the little girl that took care of him. Oh, uh, he's this... a good boy. He is. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's all the good boys. Oh. But at the same time, now, so, you if you if you follow that train of thought, though, right, then then things start to come into, uh, into play in the book that become problematic, right? So there are a lot of animals on the planet that are straight carnivores. But now they understand, they have knowledge that if they eat another animal, that's another living being that is alive and can talk and think for itself, right? So now you've got these animals who are trying to uh, learn to become vegetarians, as it were, <laughs> sometimes, if they can. And the ones that and the ones that can't, like some of the animals actually will make the sacrifice and allow themselves to be eaten. It's, it's crazy. But wow. one of the things that I want to bring up from the series uh, just happened in the second volume, because I like I've said before on the podcast, I don't read individual comic books except for right now. I'm reading the Jonathan Hickman X Men uh, books one at a time, but I normally wait until I get them in a in a completed volume, right? Um, so in the second volume of the story, 
um, one of Felton's nightmares comes true. Mm. All right? No. So, Triple B, you may not know this, but Felton absolutely has an aversion to to furries, right? Really? Yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's absolutely bad. And uh, after this, you should probably tell him the story, actually. But um, just so that like new listeners aren't like, well, why? But uh, <laughs> in this story, especially if like the new listener is a furry, they're like, what? Why? What's wrong? <laughs> but um, in this story, they actually have uh, a part where there are some animals pretending to be human, like a like um like cartoon style, like standing on top of each other's shoulders and stuff, and creating like a human kind of uh, creature, all made out of animals. And then they have humans that are dressing like animals, you know, and they're like in this like weird like <laughs> pack or whatever to to try to hunt down other humans and animals. So you can't tell if you're being attacked by a human or a human made out of animals, <laughs> you know, like it is <laughs> it, it was crazy. I love it. I love the story. Like, it, um, uh, Marguerite does really good. We actually me and um, Foxtel got to meet her at no uh, way. at Orlando. Uh, the the Orlando Comic Con, right? Not Comic Con, Orlando Mega Con. Okay. At the Mega Con, yep. And she is tall as hell. She really? has got to be. Well, I'm I'm five eleven. She's got to be over six feet tall because when she stood up, she towered over me. No, here's the question. Wow. She's, how she's tall. She's that? beautiful. Hmm. Good. Oh, this, how do you know that she's not actually a bunch of animals? A bunch of animals. Trying to pretend <laughs> to be a human. <laughs> That is true. That could, she could very well be, and maybe this this story is actually more autobi- uh, autobiographical. Or autobiographical. Wow, I can't even get the word out. Yeah, that could very well be. But either way, it's so worth checking out. So uh, it it actually the story actually makes me consider becoming a vegan. But the only bad part is then I got to tell everybody I'm a vegan. You know, I can't just be a right, vegan. Yeah. So I got to tell everybody. <laughs> Why don't you tell uh, Triple B about your aversion to furries? listen i'm 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 a tolerant guy you know it's not that uh there there are some there are some good groups out there that do charity and i'm not having a problem with them i think that they're great people and let me pause you for a second there uh, what's the name of that group by the way that oh, we met at um uh, it, uh their... guy's name that runs it is uh tim and it is the um uh, agents of mirth Yes, the Agents of Mirth, by the way, are, are some of the coolest people I've met. Furries or no, like some of the coolest people I've met. Like I don't have a problem with furries, just so you guys know. So any of your <laughs> any of your fairy fairy any of your furry hate mail can go to Felton at uh, <laughs> at Nerd United and Brevard, uh, dot com. So, so so it's just this boils down to two things that, that grind my gears, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, number <laughs> one, I can't stand when and even if it's even if it's not an adult man, you know, if it's even if it's just like a teenager, the whole like walking around with the hands limp in the front doing like this this prancing. I can't stand the prancing. <laughs> I physically feel the cringe when I see that and it just mm-hmm. it drives me nuts like the the it, it, and I guess it's more my problem than it is the furry, but like I just I can't deal yeah, with that pretty cringe. Much. It's just it's too much cringe for me to handle all at once. But this all started. I'm pretty sure it's not their problem at all. <laughs> no, but it's just it's cringy. Stop it! You don't have to prance. Put your effort into your costume. That's fine. I got all the respect in the world for for costume and prop makers. Even you know if, yeah, if furry anything, but don't prance. Come on, stop. That's it's, it's too much. So we're at, we're at Dragon Con, okay? Uh, this was maybe one of the first years I had gone to Dragon Con in Atlanta, and we stay at the uh, the Westin Hotel because that's just what my brother in law, that's the hotel he picked, and and quite frankly, I I like it. It's become our our kind of our family tradition to go there. So you yeah, know, it's, it's nice. It's 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 set apart from the other hotels are actually hosting, so it, you don't you don't have to deal with all the bs of like not being able to move around in your own hotel yeah and you you get coffee with john barrowman in the morning because he goes to starbucks right? and it's just chill standing there i mean whatever you know yep. so wow. we're there uh i'm going down to or we're coming back from you know being out all night and my brother-in-law had this big lego man outfit and all this stuff so we just changed out of our costumes and we're checking out the nightlife and uh we're, we're down in the lobby and you, you know night at the roxbury right Mm-hmm. 
So there's this guy, and he's got, like, this furry panther mask and panther hands. And him and his two buddies, his two buddies weren't dressed in, they weren't furries. They were just guys. And, you know, and he's just sitting there. He's, like, bobbing his head, and there's this music playing. And I'm just, like, laughing because at that time, I think it's hilarious that there's this, like, you know, Night at the Roxbury Panther. And, and I go to take a picture because I'm like, this is a really funny moment to me. And it's 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 pretty cool. Like, this this is a funny, you know, like, meme to capture, you know, the Night at the Roxbury Panther. So mm-hmm. this this dude takes it upon himself to be like, oh, oh, you want a picture with me? Oh, okay. I was like, no, no, no. I just, I, you know, this this moment right here, you know, this is what I wanted. So he gets up and he just, like, you know, puts his arm around me and starts like dancing, like grinding on my shoulder. And I'm like, this isn't, (laughs) this isn't what I wanted. I wanted a picture of the night at the night at the Roxbury moment, not you, uh, taking advantage of me and, and, and and putting your arm around me and grinding on me. That's, that's not okay. You're going to start, you're going to start your own furry me too movement. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I mean, I get. I guess maybe he got the wrong idea, got the wrong, you know, whatever. And I and I'm not an asshole, you know. I'm not gonna. Be maybe like, he got the. Maybe he got the right idea, and you <laughs> maybe, had the wrong maybe, idea. maybe he got the right it. idea, and I had the wrong idea. So you know, I'm not the type of. Person, I mean, two no's make a yes, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not the type of person to like, no. sho- you know, shove the guy and be like, "Oh, fuck you, man! I'll fight you!" Oh, no, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. That's not the type of person I am. No. Like. You know, it, no, you're, I, it, you're sweet and passive. Yeah, I mean, you're sweet and passive. You're like, hey, you can grab my junk. It's fine, whatever. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, I don't want you to, but I'm not gonna. I'm know. uncomfortable, but I mean, go ahead. That's fine. So anyway, so he's like doing this, and his buddies like take the picture, and I'm just standing there, awkward as hell, because this isn't what I wanted in any fashion, and it just it was so cringy because he was like doing the head bob, and again, just the 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 cringe. It was too much for me to handle, and I let I me just, ask you this real quick. What were you wearing at the time? Yeah, I was just wearing some bum ass flannel shirt, or I have no idea. Oh like, nope, that's right what it was. You're asking for it. I was. You're wearing... <laughs> you're asking for it. <laughs> I was wearing a low cut shirt, a, a short pair of uh, jorts. Um, you know. Oh I mean, my god. Was, you know, whatever. And I mean, I look back, and it's like you know, I took issue with it for a long time. Like that was just incredibly, you know, inappropriate, and that guy should have known better, and he crossed boundaries and. And and I just kind of was like, yeah, whatever. It's 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 whatever. Yeah. Well, this is my pub my public service announcement to all the listeners out there. Um, cosplay is not consent; goes both ways. So, <laughs> if you are addressing yeah. if you are addressing cosplay, you do not get to you know molest those that are not dressed in cosplay either. You yeah, know, that's it's, a it's fair a, point. It's a two way street on that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just because you're dressed in a character doesn't mean you get to get all handsy. So yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at you out there. I see you. Unless you're dressed you know as Beetlejuice, you know you are. then you are. <laughs> so, anyways, all right. So that's his uh, issue with furries. <laughs> I got molested by so, a furry. So going back gone. to the prancing. Yes. <laughs> going back to the prancing. Going back yes. to the prancing. Are you are you anti prancing in general, or is it anti furry? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Here's what I've come to realize, and this is why I've like, off. Like, do you have an issue? Do you have an issue with bronies uh, prancing? Like, is that is yeah, that a... yeah? So I've I've backed off on the issue with furries in general because I realize that I'm just my my stance on prancing is just I'm anti prancing in general. So see, okay. be it that you're a brony, a furry, uh, what are the lizard ones? A Peter Pan, the Peter uh, Pan, what? or whatever. Like, it, the, there's a whole subsection of like lizard people. That they, they like dressing as lizards. They have Sonic. Different... Sonic. Whatever you're doing, if you're prancing, <laughs> that is just stop. Don't do it. Just, Come on. Just stop it. Stop just the prancing. Stop. It's time to stop. You know what? You wouldn't say the John Barrowman, though, would you? Oh, absolutely not. He can prance and do whatever he wants. He's a delightful man. Exactly, yeah. That's right. He's a god among men. Absolutely. I agree with that. <laughs> All right, well... Enough with the uh, with your uh, your neurosis. Let's move into furry trauma. <laughs> That's something you need to talk with your counselor about, man. We can't really get we can't get we can't get you through that on the on the podcast right now. Like yeah, none of right, us are. Fine. I'm not qualified. <laughs> are you laying down on a couch right now? Actually, while you're talking to us, it's probably helpful. Yeah, bit. I'm in I'm my saying. computer chair. I'm leaning back as far as I can without f- uh, falling over. So. 
<laughs> Until one of the dogs attack you next. <laughs> all right. So uh, give us that give us that uh, that video game news that we all just need. All right. So we got some good news. Uh, I'm going to start off with okay. uh, Overwatch because I, I feel like these are the two big games right now. For some reason, I still feel like Overwatch is uh, is relevant. Maybe just because I still play it. I don't know. So it, we... it's still relevant, not irrelevant. Yeah. So we have, uh, we obviously we have news, and if you haven't heard, there's a new hero. His name is Sigma. Um, spe- you know, speaking of like you know the whole mental illness thing, there's actually I was gonna say, is it Sig- it's Sigma Freud? Yeah, he has. Uh, he, he's so he's a crazy man. Uh, he was doing oh, experiments nice. with black holes and uh, went quantum or something. So now he sees in like different realms, or I, I don't I don't know what drove him crazy in particular but we just know that he's you know kind of crazy and he can control gravity in these little little black hole balls or whatever so he has several cool (laughs) abilities he can throw a big chunk of rock and stun an opponent depending on the distance they are away he can throw a shield up um and he's a tank so he has quite a bit of health and his uh ultimate is he can he does the opposite of uh, One Punch Man in, uh, in in Overwatch. What's the what's the fisticuffs guy's name? I'm having a Doomfist. There we go. He has the, oh, the okay. opposite ability of Doomfist. Instead of coming, you know, down and like doing the meteor strike, he lifts everybody in the circle off the ground and then slams them back down to the ground. So okay, he kind of has a cool ability. So all around his so what's kid, a bunch of gravity manipulation kind of stuff. Yeah, and and his and his little uh, attack balls are kind of like Zenyatta. Uh, but it's my understanding they do a little bit more damage because he only has two, but his reload is slower. Mm. So there's some give and take there. Well, all in all, it seems like he'll be a cool character. And kind of what they do is whenever they I- introduce a new character, they kind of have to balance everybody else out. So one of the characters they're balancing So who got out, nerfed? <laughs> uh, nobody got nerfed, actually. Uh, Reinhardt oh, okay. got buffed to keep up with him. So oh, nice. His buff is, Good for Reinhardt. Yeah, his buff is with his steadfast passive ability. Um, he actually gets a significant more reduction to uh, knockback abilities. So when you do any of the abilities that move your character around, Reinhardt moves mm-hmm. a lot less now. So okay. And uh, there was one ability that actually, and I forget which character caused him to go flying off the screen, but uh, there's one ability that actually causes him to move less from this one character. So all around, uh, he has more armor, and his armor is tougher, and he has steadfast. So Reinhardt's about to become a uh, a, a lot better tank. So nice. that's awesome. This is this is all exciting. That's awesome because that's pretty much that's pretty much all he has. So that's yeah, that's yeah. pretty badass. You know, I and like he's that. close quarters. But this this other guy, Sigma, you know, he has this long range attack. So you know, you kind of have this issue of okay, well, now you have a long range and a short range tank who can throw shields up. I mean, this is this is potentially going to change a lot about the game. So it usually does. It seems when they come out with a new character, I think the only new character they added that I can think of that didn't have a significant change on the game, in my opinion, um, was uh, who's the young lady that can hack everybody. Oh, Sombra. Uh, Sombra. Yeah, I felt I don't feel like she made much of an impact in the game personally. You know, um, not as much as a lot of the other new characters they introduced uh, later or before. I think she's um, more of a utility character, though. Like you bring, you pick Sombra when you mm-hmm. gotta hack you know, Farah, you gotta hack Mercy, you gotta hack uh, Bastion, yeah. you know. And then yeah. once that's over, but there are certain characters you can pick that will cause a character switch on the other team. So if you pick yeah. a good counter and drive it hard, that's pretty much where Sombra lives, in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. I don't play ranked; I'm not that good. So, but I don't feel like she was game changing, is what I'm saying. You know? Oh I don't no! Feel but like, you know what yeah. though? If you're good mm-hmm. with her. Uh, her little friggin' submachine gun is sick. Oh yeah. yes, absolutely. That can yeah, rip especially right through the low health of squishy characters. Ooh. Absolutely, yeah. She gets in the back. She gets in the back line and starts fucking up your Zenyatta or, you know, uh, one of your other healers. Yeah, she can do some serious damage. Hack a Mercy yeah. and just you know unload a clip into him. Oh yeah. Go. Yep. Yeah. Call for <laughs> call for healing now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One of the cool things about this new guy, Sigma, is Talon Tank. So it kind of opens up the door to different uh, story mode things on a, on a bench. Oh, they're going to What drive. was that? Yeah, you, you kind of cut out there. Oh, oh I was saying uh, Sigma is Talon. 
And so it kind of opens the door to uh, uh, ooh, ooh, story, lo- story mode events. Oh, I see what you're saying. He's we're saying losing you there, Stoney. He's saying he's a Talon. He's a tank on Talon's side. That's the, oh, that's okay. The bad guys group. An evil tank. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, we're losing you a little bit there, Stoney. Sounds like like a robot dying. <laughs> and just another another quick news. Uh, Apex Legend yep. had a leak. So the next character Ooh. might be uh, Apex Legends version of uh, Sombra. So oh, we were just talking about it. yeah. <laughs> so who knows what who knows what this is going to mean? But it's a character named Crypto, and mm-hmm. they can apparently hack and find like uh, location information for the next mm-hmm. zone, but uh, objects. So we'll we'll, we'll okay. see because it's still early on, and the data leakers are still trying to dig through you know, pre-update stuff and figure out what's going on exactly. So, well, I could imagine a Sombra S character in that game actually being devastating. Oh, absolutely, you know, because... because you already have so little with the with the extra abilities. They don't really give you mm-hmm. a terrible... People rely too much on their, like, quote-unquote ultimates, and they don't really do yeah. anything. This is the first... Uh, Apex is a first-person shooter at its core, and yeah. you can use the escape ability. Sure, that's an advantage, but... If you're terrible at aiming and shooting and, and left clicking on the head, then yeah, their abilities don't. Yeah. It's not the same as Overwatch. Like, you, there's no game oh, changing. Yeah. Like, oh, you got to use your ultimate and everybody dies. Yeah. Well, uh, any other? So we got that. Any other gaming news? Uh, the only other, the only other point. Um, I'm going to open up. I've decided a uh, mm-hmm. Beat Saber um, gym. <laughs> because I found out that uh, Beat Saber is on the Oculus Quest, which is okay. the uh, mobile version of the Oculus. So obviously, what I need to do is, you know, really get into the uh, the health field as a uh, uh, you know Beat Saber guru. Well, you could just go and teach classes on it. You know, like a like a. What do they call it? The cycling classes and all that kind of stuff, you know? Oh, exactly. That's what that's what I want to do. I want to get a bunch of uh, Beat Saber headsets and, and have a cycling-esque mm-hmm. Beat Saber class. It's going to be amazing. You could be like Joan of Arc in uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Just get up there and <laughs> doing the aerobic stuff and everything. Right oh, matter of fact, if you, of, I'll, I'll pay you money to wear that outfit. Go ahead. Speaking <laughs> of, have you seen some of the, uh, uh, some of the on-set pictures of uh, Mr. Keanu Reeves? Because they started filming. Uh, no. Yeah, they started filming no. for the new Bill and Ted. Please tell me he looks really bad and out of shape. Like that's the like, the whole thing. Because I picture this this next movie. Because especially because it's called Face the Music. I picture that, like I said before, I think on the podcast, I think this one's gonna be set in a uh, in an alternate timeline because you know they changed they altered the future by doing their their adventures, right? Yeah. Um. So now it's like they've spent their entire lives now waiting for this like wonderful future and this rock you know band thing they got and all this other stuff to just come together for them and it doesn't and, and now it's they're 2019 just like 2019 in modern times mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the world is as it is now like that would exactly. be so incredible if they did that and they and they just have like shitty crappy lives like crappy jobs like one's a pizza delivery guy the other one I don't know works at you know um uh, the other one works in the pizza delivery place, you know, answering the phones or something. You know what I mean, like just crappy jobs, crap. Or they work at Seven Elevens. Actually, that's even better. And you know, all of a sudden, Rufus, who's not Rufus anymore, comes to to you know to whisk them away and try to to save what little bit of uh, life they have left. I don't know, just something like that. Like, I don't know, but I cannot, I cannot wait because it's been what thirty years since. The I first know. Film? I'm. I'm excited, man. I like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is one of my favorite movies when I was growing up. Bogus oh, Adventure, yeah. not so much. Like Bogus Adventure was cool because they went in a totally different direction, which I liked. But it, you know. Well, here's the thing, though. Um, the the actor that mm-hmm. played Death, I I don't know, I don't know that guy's name, but he's mm-hmm. one of those dudes. He's just been in everything, right? You have sunk my battleship. I fu- <laughs> I fucking love that guy. Like yep. I, I I actually enjoyed the second movie. I'm not going to say more than the first one. No, but... I liked it. I didn't. I'm not saying I didn't like it. It's, and it was ballsy to go in a totally different direction. You know, to not just do the same movie again. You know, where they're time travel and this time they're going through you know heaven and hell and and, and purgatory mm-hmm. and nightmares and all that kind of stuff. You know, station. <laughs> all right. Well, before we close out, um, 
let's uh let's turn it over to triple b here and find out uh, you know let's get a nice hot dose of his uh kickstarter <laughs> addiction yeah so <clears throat> i've actually got one that i think you guys are gonna really enjoy uh it's <laughs> this uh it's actually from the second volume it's called uh metal shark bro island of misfits bros Oh my god, I I have not gotten the first one yet, but I keep seeing stuff on my feed about it. I need to to get that that book. But go ahead. This is this is insane. I'm reading from the first one. Um, off the coast of Bali, a shark is chilling and looking for a bite to eat. Enter Bielzebra, the douchey nephew of Satan. On a whim, the douche interrupts this chill fish, transmute anthropomorphic shark with a penchant for. It's a classic shark meet, shark meets demon, demon transforms shark, shark vows vengeance on demon. Nice. It's a nice yeah. It's a nice shark meets demon story. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my so I, I can't I I have to link the uh uh case started here for you guys because I cannot get over it. If you scroll down just a little bit, there's a picture of the cover and he's fighting like some sort of uh looks like a hamster person but his nipples are like as long as fingers <laughs> oh, that's little sh- metal shark bros nipples like <laughs> i didn't even know sharks had nipples but these are like giant like forever metal, long I, metal shark bro has them i can't get over it so, do you like, even shark bro I, <laughs> this is amazing. you know what do me a favor you're you're one of our admins like just post it post the kickstarter on the nub <laughs> I'm, let I'm everybody know it right now do it do it tonight i mean this podcast won't come out tonight but people will be like we'll go back to like oh where's that <laughs> oh god i'm dying <laughs> <laughs> all right well it's about that time so uh mr triple b if you will roll your d20 for us and tell us I've what got, you got I've got, it, I've got it here uh 10 all right are you going to add or subtract or do nothing with that to uh felton's uh 20 d20 you, you know what i think this time i'm gonna do nothing do I'm nothing okay uh, all right uh, let me run to the re- living room unless i can trust one of you to roll uh i mean you could trust me to roll oh god <laughs> all right go, go ahead <laughs> or you could have triple b roll for you oh okay yeah go ahead okay i'll, I'll roll again here we go uh, 18. Oh, so close. Oh, phew. Okay. If it was me, if it was me, I would have said one. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, I would have gotten the, I would have gotten the microphone real close and been like, one. <laughs> I feel like that's what you do as a DM. Uh, I'm not going to confirm nor deny that, but let me just tell you this. There's been plenty of times where I would have wiped you off the board and I didn't. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I put out I put out fires by You do put out. You put out a lot. <laughs> and I saved the entire crew. So I don't want to hear it. All Actually, right? I know we're running a little late, but just can you tell them real quick uh the concept of your last character that you played with in our in our in a D&D game with us? So I was a half orc ranger who was racist toward his orc side. And operated with like this level of deeply closeted uh, orkness, so that he just didn't recognize that he was half orc. He would refer himself as, as half human. You know, you know, introduce himself and be like, "Oh, you know, I'm half human." But you know, some would say, you know, that I'm all human. And you know, he would just completely <laughs> ignore the fact that he's a half orc. You know, he's just like this big giant lumbering dude with uh, gray skin and. You know, is uh, is absolutely uh, racist toward orcs because you know this this whole backstory that I that I created that's a sad and uh, wonderful thing. So <laughs> that sounds great. That was it's a lot of fun. And it, it was just fun. It'd be so funny when we're, when we're role playing and he'd be like, you know, I was I was uh, throwing goblins around the field, you know, like humans do. <laughs> like, he would always <laughs> it's always something like that. It's always like. You know, I was uh, I was sharpening my tusks. You know, like humans do. Uh, all of us have our tusks that we sharpen, and uh, it's just <laughs> stuff like that. It was just oh, priceless. All right, well, we're gonna have to stop it here. Um, I, now Triple B apparently is moving. Um, so hopefully next uh next podcast we'll be able to hear him a little better. 
Um, if not, I think we're gonna have to bring up like a, a GoFundMe or something like that, so we can buy him like a really nice headset or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we gotta. Hey, a I don't know what we gotta do. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> he can feed his own addiction with his addiction. It would be fantastic. That's right. So for now, uh, I'm the Merce. Uh, Felton. And the bald bearded bard. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.